And are you refreshed? Now what? You got stirred up, didn't you? I'm honored to be here. Um, a few questions, but I'll stick to two. Uh, <laughs> the clock uh, repetitions, one, 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 two, 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 three, threes, one, two, three, fours. Uh, they keep happening to me all the time. Uh, and I've learned a little bit about it, and I try to manifest that more and more. Is that universe responding to me or um, my inner being giving an assurance that it can be done? What is well, the significance? Let's talk about what is actually happening because the law of attraction is the manager of rendezvous and of timing. That's the place to start. And so if you have to find something. Esther really likes that too. 1111 happens to her quite often. She won't look at her phone except when those numbers are lined up. And she knows that it's logical that they're going to come around a couple of times a day. But her impulse to look, she understands, is because she's tuned in with us and we know she likes it. And so we call her attention to it. It's timing. That's the law of attraction. It happens to you on things wanted and unwanted. They're rendezvous. I just enjoy that. that. That's what I do. Yeah. Well, yeah. you can define anything. You can say, this is something that I would like to see. And if it's something that you have no resistance about, you will see it many, many, many times in every day. In other words, that's just how the law of attraction works. You get to choose what you rendezvous with. And so the key to really fun, powerful, deliberate creating is to get to the point where the things that you really care about, you have no resistance about it. So those things you really care about can happen frequently. Sometimes the things that people think the most about, they have the most resistance about. And so that's why we call that sort of muddy. I really want it, but I really want it, but I really want it, but. But when it's clear, clean vibration, then you're going to rendezvous with it. And so just know that on that particular subject, you've got a clear, clean vibration. So there's one definition that angels are giving you messages. Each number has some message associated with it. Not well, that. you get to assign all of that. People would hand books off to Esther and to Jerry and Esther all the time. And someone had given them a book. And in the foreword of the book was a really good story about abundance and how when you find something like a penny, take it as a sign of abundance and begin to notice it. And Jerry and Esther just read the chapter. Jerry read it to her. It was a preface to a book. Jerry read it to Esther while they were driving. And as soon as they got out of the car, there were pennies on the pavement. And Jerry said, well, that was fast. And so they started playing with it. Well, over the next few days, there were pennies everywhere. Now, why is this? Is this angels guiding them to pennies? Or is it something that captivated their attention, that was active in their vibration? They had no problem accepting the premise of the book. They understood about law of attraction even at that point. And so there were pennies everywhere, bright, shiny, in most cases, pennies. And Jerry is teasing Esther. You're running ahead and dropping them on the ground just to play with me. He knew she was not, but it was happening so much that it was weird. And so they got on an airplane one day. They were sitting up front at the bulkhead with a wall in front of them, no people ahead of them. And as the plane took off, Jerry said, you're not going to believe this. Look down. And his sister looked at the floor. There were two pennies that had been on the floor that when the plane took off, stood up on their edge. And Jerry said, I'm glad you're looking at this because <laughs> if I was trying to get you to believe that that had happened... The universe is capable of so much. And the more you like it and the more you expect it, the more you'll get it. Or the more you expect it, the more you'll get it. A whole lot of people are getting a whole lot of stuff they don't want, but they expect. Yeah. And as far as angels go, your inner being is aware of you constantly. Everybody who has ever been in physical form, who has reemerged into non-physical, is aware and eager about what's going on. So 
You could even read a book about a sports figure or a musician, someone that you're interested in, and activate them in your vibration, and they will rendezvous with you in all kinds of ways. You think 11-11 is fun. Wait until you see what can happen with all manner of evidence, things that you couldn't orchestrate if you tried, but the universe can. Show yourself what a good receiver you are. Yeah. Thank you. Something more? Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> um, I'd like to believe I'm a fairly healthy person and all the fairly what? Fairly healthy person. Healthy, fairly. Uh, healthy. <laughs> uh, and I've led my life not knowing the principles of attraction. But you know them now, and now it is where your point of attraction is. So nothing that was before is important at all in comparison with what's going on right now. Correct. One thing bothers me, though. Um, well, everyone... activate that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's muddy up the water right now with this. Let's bring that from wherever it has been right into the now. So not try to find answers. We're playing with you, sort yes. of, kind of. Yeah. But when someone starts out with one thing that bothers me, it's sort of like, here, taste this. It's terrible. <laughs> and the more you hate it, the more I'm going to give it to you every day. Yeah, everything was working out just fine until I had yeah, just right. <laughs> yeah, just right. Until. Yeah. See, this is a good thing to talk about because what is the ravenous nature? The law of attraction is a very powerful thing, isn't it? Something gets activated in your vibration, and whether you want it or not. It's sort of kind of there. Think about it, those of you who are listening in. It's like this that we're about to hear about has been coming into vibrational clarity. It's already burst into his mind. It's about to burst into your mind as he speaks it. And at the birthing point, it's sort of like the baby's ready to be born. Hard to hold it back, isn't it? And so you want to get out ahead of it if something's been bothering you then if you can find the other end of that stick and activate that so 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 um as i said i'm really happy person all through my life not yeah yeah yeah. yeah 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 and then i had a heart attack yeah and that hurt the family so much it didn't as much uh except for the idea of popping pills now for the rest of my life and all of that. That changed, uh, even though I didn't know the vibration of negativity that much, because I thought uh, I was just leading a normal life and a happy life, that kind of thing, it changed. Most people believe in decline. And most people associate decline with factors like age, going through time, that sort of thing. Decline is not a necessary thing, even if it begins to show evidence in other words your power is all right here and now so can you tell us did the experience the unwanted experience did it give birth to any fresher or stronger desires no it didn't give you a greater appreciation of life physical life it did but the the family went through quite a lot as a result and that family what the family went quite a lot. They did uh, what? The family went through a lot of pain during that time, and that was unnecessary, I thought, even though I'd never really invited that vibration myself. Is that a feeling of regret when you say the family? Yes. So the thing about regret is truly a wasted emotion because as you focus on something unwanted. I didn't want to have a heart attack. I didn't mean to have a heart attack. I didn't mean for my family to worry about me. I didn't mean for my family to suffer for me. But you're keeping that active in the vibration unnecessarily. You said it was sort of unnecessary for them to go through all that pain. And so it's unnecessary for you to keep it going through expectation. Do you believe that what happened has charted a specific and absolute course? 
We're going to give you something. Esther was chewing on this with friends at dinner last night. It's something that's been hatching, and it came this morning as she was working on the book. So we're going to give it to you here. We haven't talked about this this way before. You get the idea of what you think is how you feel, and how you feel is what you get. That's a logical basis, and it's a simple way to sort of start this conversation. So now, let's talk about a wish. And can you tell us, is a wish stronger than a hope, or is a hope stronger than a wish? Nitpicking, they're pretty close, but does a wish, I wish for that, I hope for that, which feels stronger? I wish, wish, I hope. Well, it could go either way, really. A wish is sort of a wondering thing. A hope is getting hold of it and having a little more skin in the game, so to speak. But a wish is lighter and then a hope. Now, what about a dream? A wish, a hope, a dream. Can you feel that a dream has more, more momentum? I sort of wondered and wished, and then I sort of hoped, but then I started dreaming about it. And now, a desire, a desire and intent. Can you feel how it's softer, but it's becoming more and more? So we want you to feel with us as we just play this word game. The difference in the intensity of the vibration behind the words. Make sense to you? Now, so let's say... You weren't very clear, but you got clear, and you got clear, and you got clear. In other words, you wished for a good life, you hoped for a good life. Then something sort of challenged that, and you began focusing more, and now you're really intending and desiring for a strong, healthy life. Can you feel how you've shored up some vibration? So that's the asking part. When you ask, it is given. But now, what else are you doing? Well... There are other people around you who influence you. Your family suffering. You already mentioned that. So let's say that you have brought yourself through life experience to a strong desire intention. And let's say that it's strong within you. Maybe you've been talking with us and we are certain about your well-being. You're right there. And so you could say that with that intention that is strong within you, that there is a feeling of certainty about your well-being. Just feel that for a minute. Feel what a strong desire and certainty feels like. Can you feel it? Now let's back off of certainty a little bit as we're talking to the peanut gallery parents and doctors and anybody else who's involved in making their decisions about me based upon what other people are doing. They mean well. They just don't help in that regard. And so now that I'm sort of listening, now my intent that felt sure now feels probable, maybe probable. But as I keep talking, well, maybe it's possible. And as I keep talking more, well, now it's unlikely. You get to decide where it is. You get to decide how strong the desire is, and you get to decide what you do with the desire once it's hatched within you. And that is what equals what everyone is living. There are people with desires that they've just listened to so many others and taking score of what is for so long and not focused on the laws of the universe and not been steady enough that they just don't believe. And so it's just unlikely, whether it's a wish or a hope or a dream or a desire, it's not likely that it's going to burst onto the manifested scene because it's muddy. Because the lazy thoughts, the picking up the thoughts of others, the watching statistics, statistics have nothing to do with you. It doesn't matter what anybody else has done with anything because they have had these combinations of maybe it's a strong desire, maybe it's a little fluffy wish. Do you know a little fluffy wish with no doubt will come true every time? Butterflies, if you've got just a little fluffy wish and you're not contradicting it with any doubtful thought, it's going to come about. That's why people can create stuff they don't care about. But when you really care about it, you're more likely to introduce clutter into the vibrational mix and at least hold off the evidence that could be there otherwise. I understand. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.